What's up, y'all? So, um, God is good, right? Let me wipe this lens off. God is good. 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 Um, I've been uh, making an effort to not only remain healthy uh, mentally, first and foremost, like I said, uh, I started going to therapy two years ago. Well, I did a year and a half of therapy, well, a little bit over a year of therapy. And um, I'm considering going back because I've been away for a year. But I want to say this is that I start going to therapy, so my mental well-being is important. I start going to gym, so my physical well-being is important. And I continue to uh, go to church, which even outside of church, I, you know, I pray. Um, I talk to God to my highest capabilities and understanding what that means for me to talk to God. So I'm just looking at, like, you know, sometimes I got to realize that even an imperfection it's still progression. <laughs> Even an imperfection is still progression. And, uh, you know, if you know me in real life, I'm not no holier than thou person. I do hold myself accountable, accountable <laughs> to the level of consciousness I have, but I'm not. I never try to pretend to be something I'm not. You know, you can meet hundreds of people who know me. And you're going to see the similarities and patterns. Now, they may met me in some worst moments or horrible moments of my journey and my experiences. But you're going to, if you listen, you're going to hear the consistency of who I am, what inspires me, what motivates me, what I strive to do, what I strive to be. Um, I care very deeply. I do not like to play games. Um, you know, seem like it to some people when you're like low functioning. <laughs> Shout out to Miss uh, Doctor Cheyenne uh, Bryant, um, but I don't I don't like to play games. I don't I don't play games at all. You know it might be the St. Louis in me. Cut to the chase. What are we doing? What are we What are we striving to do? It could be friendship, relationship, partnership. I'm at a church. I'm like, hey man, y'all cast out demons here. You got somebody prophesy dreams, uh, interpret tongues. Like what are, What are, What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And that's who God created me to be. Of course, I'm learning to utilize wisdom and discernment in my journey when it comes to being that in the right time. Well, Sunday, I made a video on my YouTube, and I had on the same shirt to go wash it. And I wouldn't even wear this shirt in public at first because it represents the church I belong to in St. Louis. Shout out to Pastor Nese Williams. And my brothers and sisters there at that church. Man. I love y'all. And I've been showing a lot of love of God through other people that's even outside of the church. So. Um, but Sunday I made a video where I was talking about Not sure if I want to go to church and desiring certain things, wondering why God not answering my prayers in certain areas of life. For me as a, a individual and as a man, and things I want to ex experience now, and a lot of it had to do with like marriage, being a husband, having a wife, being a father, having a family. And I say, well. I'm 40 years old who did I had some failures in my past and 
And maybe it's just my time. It ain't my time or it ain't my season. It quite possibly, it's just not what God wanted me to experience in my lifetime. But I said, you know, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go to church at first. I'm currently not in my hometown. When I'm in my hometown, I go to church every Sunday. But I'm not. But I listened to this voice and told me to go to church. And then I go to church. And the first thing the pastor talked about, he said, we're going to talk about marriage, relationships, and sex, according to Solomon. You know? Now, I, as a person who used to be an atheist, if you knew me my lifetime, you know I used to denounce the existence of God. It wasn't even about just Jesus. I'm talking about anything associated with God. I didn't want to hear it. So I, I ain't want to see like I'm crazy, but I'm like, it's weird that I got to a point in my life and my journey where I'm just like, I give up. I'm like, God, okay, I'm trusting you for so many things, but I'm, I can't trust you in that area. <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't trust you. I didn't say it, but that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't trust you in that area of my life, my heart, my desires. Then I go to church. And that's what they're talking about. Of course, I'm listening to the message. And uh, it's hitting me. Because it's some good things the guys are hitting on. Well, I'm like, yeah, I felt misunderstood in my last marriage. She was doing this and saying this, and she hurt my feelings like that, and she disrespected me like this, and then, then the pastor had to work it on to the men, the husbands. And of course, I'm angry, I'm agitated, and I'm convicted. Anybody who's being led by the Spirit when you go into church, you know how it is, or your spiritual identification. But I listen to the message. Y'all know I write a lot. I journal. I go. I receive the message. I leave. I'm feeling. And then I've been using my fitness pal, counting my calories, and making the effort to eat healthier. And now it's not perfect. not perfect but compared to where I was this time last year to where I'm at today it's progress I still ain't been eating the healthiest all day every day I still ain't been exercising every day of the week I still ain't been drinking only water <laughs> but God knows I've been trying I've been trying. 
I've been trying my best to be my best. Some days, some days is better than others. Some days I'm just, I'm waking up, I'm praying, I'm stretching, I'm talking to God, I'm drinking water, I'm avoiding beef, I'm avoiding pork, I'm eating fruits and vegetables, I'm I'm exercising, I'm going to the gym. <laughs> And then some days I'm waking up, I'm going to McDonald's, I'm getting that bagel sandwich, I'm getting all the meats on it, I'm drinking a soda, I ain't going to the gym, I'm stopping at the bar, I'm stopping at the liquor store, I'm stopping at the gas station. And I'm taking those moments and I'm like, ain't no way I'm doing the right thing. Ain't no way that God still love me. Ain't no way God still hear my prayers. Ain't no way God want me to still have good things. So Sunday I leave church. I'm, ca I'm, I'm sticking with the, the calories on my fitness pal for my, my fitness goal. And I'm feeling depressed. This type of depression I'm feeling, I haven't felt in a long time. I'm thinking about the last six, seven years of my life. From divorce. All time of type of betrayal, backstabbing, foolish things I've done, wrong things I said. <laughs> I want to go home, lay down and dwell. In my sadness. But I said, nah, Jason. Let's go to the gym. Let's go to the gym. <laughs> I go to the gym. I'll get on the scale. I just know that scale for the Saturday game. 10, 15, 20 pounds. The scale said I lost 9 pounds. <sighs> this time a year ago. I was 250 pounds. I got on that scale of 235. When I started utilizing this app of intentionally trying to be better, it was like 21, 22 days ago. I lost nine pounds. Because even though I ain't as good as I can be, I'm better than I was. I'm better than I was. And then when I went to the gym, I was so tired, but I didn't do it like a hard workout, but I did something. I got on that treadmill and I walked for three minutes. I mean, 30 minutes. And while I was on that treadmill, I didn't realize. Well, see, when I first started off on a treadmill of choosing to intend to try to be healthy almost a year ago, the treadmill had to be on one. And it took me an hour to get a mile. I looked down at that treadmill. It was at 3.5 with a 1.5 incline. I'm like, <laughs> Whoa. A year ago, I was at 1.0 with a zero incline. And it took me an hour to get a mile. I got that mile done in less than 30 minutes compared to where I was. Uh, I was like, oh, you getting a little bit better compared to where you was. Then I I do 80 crunches. I mean, I'm on this little machine. I mean, this equipment. It wasn't a machine machine, but it's some equipment. Well, no crunches, not full push-ups. I did 80 of them, but not straight. I did <laughs> I did, I did four sets of 20. I did four sets of 20. I did four sets of 20. And I did that. Then I got swimming in the pool for about 20 minutes. 15 minutes of steam room, editing my content videos. And I leave. I was in the gym for like three hours. I go home, go to bed. I wake up Monday. <laughs> I take care of my business. And by the time I end of my day come, I'm like, man, I'm bored. I feel like having fun. And I don't want to do the shit that I used to do for the toxic stuff. 
but you know I work I go to a bookstore I go to a gym but I, I need balance and I just get to talking to God get to praying to God and just keeping it real with him and uh, when I began to do that I like okay I feel like talking to a woman not just so it's like I, I'm making friends because of a crazy part it, I'm making friends early that morning I went back to the gym and I and I met some guys who was talking about Jesus we all got different perspectives and views and approaches but the common ground is we wanted to be pleasing to God and uh those two men were married I'm the guy I'm the divorcee of the group Or they don't got no wife. I'm the one who has failure on his resume when it comes to marriage. But I'm able to offer some wisdom. Even when I was in men's locker room prayer call that morning, I mentioned it. And the pastor said, Jason, God has delivered you for some, some things. I, I'm paraphrasing. And you're more equipped to respond to having a wife. He's going to bless you with a beautiful wife this Monday. And at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm bored. And I feel like having fun. I want balance. I'm just being honest, transparent. Like, I want to go to church on Sundays. I want to be there all day, every day, not at this season. Not saying I won't be, but I'm just saying, like, I need some balance. And... While I'm going through that experience and observation, I'm just being honest and transparent. And so today, today I get up, take care of my business. And then I just so happened to watch that Cam Newton and uh, the therapist for Shire and Brian, they're talking about broken families and it's hitting me for a different couple of different reasons and angles. And what she wouldn't tolerate, which you know, she didn't say nothing wrong, but I'm listening to it. And I'm going to take care of my business throughout the day, but I just, so coincidentally, towards the end of my day, meet this woman, and we just get to talking and chatting. And then she asked me, and I'm not saying this is nothing more or less than what it is but it just you know you get what I'm saying how this pattern she says we get to talking and I ain't go super deep like I'm going now but we talking she goes what do you do for fun I said I don't even know I'm so used to make sure everybody else have fun I just don't I ain't no woman ever asked me what I do for fun. Now they wanted me to provide the fun. I'm a comedian. If you look me up, focus on a funny LC. People have fun with me. Because I make sure they have fun. But I don't be having fun. I'm an entertainer. I'm a call, I'm accustomed to be accommodating and appeasing the people. That's how I, I make money. That's how I had to keep friends. That's how I had to have relationships. <laughs> and not to read too deep into it, but I just took it like even in this moment as I've been learning how to be a better man from within myself, learning how to talk to a woman, be considerate and sensitive to certain things, as well as Standing my ground and developing boundaries. Some non-negotiables, like my mental health is non-negotiable. My physical health is non-negotiable. My spiritual health is non-negotiable. <laughs> then she asked me, what do I do for fun? I said, I said, I need a balance. I just take that at minimum. 
The guys let me know I'm heading the right direction. See, I used to be an atheist, but when I started believing in a higher power, it was 2005. I was apprehensive about Christianity because of the historical context of things. And I know it ain't the presentation of it ain't perfect, but a year later, God had revealed himself to me. And I wanted in church to read the Bible, but I couldn't deny it. Now, when I started reading the Bible, I read about how Abraham, when he wanted to sign for his son Isaac to receive a wife, or no, the, the, the servant of Isaac, Abraham's son, needed a sign that he was heading the right direction. He said, he said in his heart, God. These are the things I'm looking for this woman to do. Let me know I'm coming across the right wife. And I think something about the feeding the camel. I can't tell you verbatim what it was, but it was about feeding the camel. And, uh, you know, something, some shit, man. Somebody who been raised in church to read the Bible fucking know what the fuck I'm talking about. So I remember 2006, I asked God out of anger, what do you tell for me to do? And he answered me. He said, a teacher and a counselor. immediately in my heart like it was just like I felt it now I barely graduated high school I was almost 20 years old two years later I was working with kids in group homes and I used to live in them and guess what I was doing teaching and counseling even when I even I had the paperwork I didn't even qualify to do that work because I barely have a high school diploma <laughs> or to have a little, the work experience so that experience back then Reminded me of what happened today. I just told God. Sundays. My, my doubt. My doubt. I told God Sunday. My doubt. Monday I told God what I wanted. Tuesday. Somebody asked me, what do I do for fun? It wasn't about, what could I do for them? Just what do I do for fun? And you know what's so crazy? That individual told me, they also haven't had fun in a long time. Not exactly the same experiences, but similar thoughts, stuff. And yeah, I'm going to use better wisdom and discernment than I had in the past. I'm going to turn to God, but I just took that at minimum that God was reinforcing to me. I'm heading the right direction.